Amen. Anybody else? I was going to ask somebody got something to be thankful about after all that singing myself. I thought about that. Amen. God's good. Yeah, amen. Walked back there shaking hands and Miss Peel just crying her eyeballs out said, I thank the Lord I can walk into church today. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen, Miss Peel. Good to see you. Amen. Well, we don't never know how good we got it. Amen. Till you don't have it no more. Better thank God for God's goodness on your life. Amen. God sure is good to us. Amen. Miss Shelby often walks out of church now crying almost every time she leaves. Amen. And I think about the times when she didn't have much health problems, just springing along, serving the Lord. Now she's a little bit up in age, doing what she can. And I thank God for that. Amen. Even though it's just Sunday mornings, amen, that's fine. That's all you can do. Now, if you can do more, that ain't fine. But when you get to that point in life and you serve the Lord faithfully and you just can't get up and move like you used to could and you're doing what you can, thank God for it. Yeah, amen. amen. But don't wait till you get to that point and wish you'd have done more. That's what happens in a lot of cases, amen. A lot of people get to that point in life and they do and can't wish they could do more, but they didn't do it when they could. You better take advantage of God's goodness in your life, amen. You just never know how good you got it, amen. You never know what a day will bring forth. Matthew chapter number 8, turn, no, excuse me, Mark chapter number 8, Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter number 8, good to see you in church today, thank the Lord a lot of the sicknesses is behind a lot of people, glory to God for that, pray to stay away, Mark chapter number 8, this is a very familiar passage of scripture we'll preach out of this morning. You find your place to Mark chapter 8. Look down to verse 34, down to the end of the chapter. We'll read from verse 34 to verse 38. Amen. Mark chapter 8. Amen. Verse 34. What's the first word there? Amen. Amen. Remember Miss Crystal that got saved the other day? She's sick. Amen. Her and Miss Jessica and them, so pray for them. Mark chapter number 8, verse 34. The Bible said, and when he called the people unto him, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, he's calling these people unto him with his disciples also. So Jesus has called this crowd together, his disciples and these other people. He said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life, shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That shows you that that thing about the soul and eternity is an individual choice. It's not a collective thing. What shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his, his own soul? You've got your own that you're going to give an account of. The Bible says in verse 37, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Individual. Not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your parents, not the preacher, not the deacons. Yours. Mine. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. That's up to date, ain't it? Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Let's ask the Lord for some help as we look into his book this morning. Amen. Brother Ben, how about pray for us, brother? Lord, I thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Yes, yes, we do. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord, for it. Yes. Be 
Amen. Appreciate that, brother. There's a lot of things in this passage of Scripture that's very up to date in the day we live in, but probably not much accepted. He talks about being a disciple in verse number 34. The Bible says, and he said unto his people and the disciples, whosoever will come after me, if you're going to come after the Lord, he said, first, let him deny himself. That's what we got a lot of problem with, is denying self. Take up his cross, find out what you're supposed to be doing, and follow the Lord. That's the disciple, amen. Deny himself, taking up his cross, and following the Lord. Then he says in verse 34, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You say, that don't make much sense to save it, then you lose it. But if you lose it, you save it. Hey, you lose it and you save it, and when you lose it for his sake and the gospel, amen. Hey, our life is about the sake of the Lord and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then the Lord at that crowd gathering there, he asked a couple of questions. Verse 36, he says, And what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? He didn't wait for an answer, but let me pause just for a moment. And what will it profit you? Or to profit me if we're to gain not just some of the world, but he said if you gain the whole world, if you had it all in your hands and it was yours, what would it profit if you had all that and lose your own soul? He said in verse 37, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, none of us in here today have the whole world in our grips, in our hand, but we have certain things that we have that if we would admit we're exchanging them for our soul. Small as it is, but how attractive it is to the flesh that we're willing to have that instead of the will of God in our lives. What will you give in exchange for your soul? He speaks about those being ashamed of him in this adulterous and sinful generation. I'm going to take this little passage and preach on this question this morning. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Here in this passage, we see a scale that the Lord lays before us. The whole world on one side and your own soul on the other. A higher life of serving the Lord or a lower life serving the world. Amen. Hey, we're living in an age where people are selling out the higher life of Christianity for something lower. We're living in an age where people are selling out their own soul for a, a taste or a little grasp of this old world. Do you know, we find an example of this of Judas is scared in the Bible. The devil himself is the example of someone that would sell it all out and lose their soul. Exchange in a better life of serving the Lord for something of this whole world. Look in Matthew chapter number 27. It's not far from Mark. Matthew chapter number 27. Uh, G Judas did this. He sold it all out. You know, I'd ask Judas if we had uh, time today and if we would be able to resurrect him out of hell, which we cannot. Judas, was it worth it? Was it worth selling out the Lord for 30 pieces of silver? Was it worth turning your back on the creator of the world? Was it worth getting a little glimpse of satisfaction for your flesh to go to hell over it? Matthew chapter 27, look in verse number 1. Hey, Judas, uh, he, you, know, you know what's a shame to this? Judas realized it wasn't worth it right before he went to hell, but it was too late. Do you know what's a shame? Hey, I hope not, but probably in the case is there'll be a lot of people, they'll realize it's too worth it. wasn't worth it, but it'll be too late. It'd be too late to call out on the Lord. It'd be too late to get saved. It'd be too late to get it right when you realize I've wasted it all and I've got nothing to show for it. You're on your deathbed and facing eternity. Matthew 27 and verse 1, when the morning was come, Judas has betrayed the Lord. He's kissed him on the cheek. He's, he took his money, his bag. The Bible says, and when the morning was come, the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, 
he, he begins to feel the guilt and the shame. The Bible said he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. That's what he sold the Lord out, amen. Hey, they were looking for somebody to find some charge against him to bring this Jesus to us. And Judah said, I'll be the one. Just give me 30 pieces. That's all I want. I don't want the whole world. I just want 30 pieces of silver. And he sold his soul out of the 30 pieces of silver, amen. The Bible said he, had, he realizes he's condemned. He realizes the guilt of his shame. And he brings the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. And verse 4 says, saying, I've sinned, and that I betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to it. Do you know what the world will do to you? Hey, the world's got all the glitter and glamour. Listen to me, young people. It's got all the attraction out there, all the lights and the glitter. And you think, if I can just get a hold of that, if I just get a little taste of that, if I just enjoy a little bit of that. Hey, they're not telling you they don't care for your soul. They said, what is that to us? See thou to it. Help yourself. It's over. We don't care. We've used you. We've abused you. We've got what we wanted out of you. And we can care less what happens to you. Amen. That's the way the world will do you. Hey, go not you come drink our alcohol? Won't you come smoke our dope? Won't you come live our lifestyle? Hey, there's joy and pleasure, but it's only for a season, the Bible said. And they'll show you down the river when you got nothing to give back. They got what they wanted out of him. I asked Judas this morning, is was it worth it? Was it worth it when the book of Acts said he went out and hung himself? And the earth shook after Jesus Christ out on the cross. And the limb broke that he'd hung his neck by. And his bowels burst out of sunday when he, he fell upon the rocks from hanging himself. Was it worth it, amen? Was it worth it? It ain't worth it. No, it's not worth it. Many of people are destroying their own lives. And the pay that you get for it is not worth it. Let me say number one by way of introduction. Our country sold out. You say, preacher, I'm an American. So am I, but our country's sold out. Man, get your head out of the dirt. The Bible says in uh, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. America has forgot God. Hey, man, I don't know if you don't realize it. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 34, Righteousness exalteth the nation, but, a sin, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. Hey, you've never seen it like we see it. I know the Bible said Jesus said this adulterous and sinful generation in that day, but, man, you've not seen it on this scale. Hey, what an awful scale it's become. It's like the days of Noah, like the days back then, and we've never seen it in our time. You've never seen it in your time. It's never been as worst as it is today. Hey, there's never been a time in America where Americans voted whether it was right to be married as a sodomite. You've never seen it out in America. Hey, our country, amen, hey, sin is tearing us down and destroying us. Hey, we sold out, amen, our country, amen. You've never, you've never seen on a ballot where they voted for, to legalize drugs? Hey, this is on the ballots of America. When you, when you go up to vote, we're voting whether it's right to be a sodomite. Hey, we're voting whether it's right to legalize drugs. We've never seen it like this, amen. Our nation is going to pot, man. It's in a mess that we're living in. Hey, hey, our world's going down, amen. Hey, we vote whether it's right to kill babies. You've never seen it like that. Hey, we vote whether it's right to bear arms. You've never seen it like that. I'm talking about the day that we're living in. Our nation has sold it out, amen. amen. Let me just go ahead and ask you right now, amen. Hey, you ain't seen the end of it. We ain't seen the end of it, but has it been worth it? Is it worth it, America, for what we sold her down, to, uh, down to, uh, the drain for? Is it worth it? America is sold out to pornography. They sold out the sex. They sold out the drugs. We sold out the alcohol. We sold out the gambling. Hey, we made heroes out of sinners in America. Heroes, you never saw it like this. Hey, you never saw it in a day where a man can make counterfeit money and the law will lock him up. I'm not saying it was right for George, George Floyd to be killed. It wasn't right for you to put your neck on him and choke his life out of him. But it wasn't right to make a god out of him when he wasn't nothing but a drug head and a, and a counterfeit of money. That's a hero today. Don't look at me like I'm lost some of my mind. Hey, we've lost our mind. This world's deceiving us. We're being taught by the media and the, and the, and the television more than our Bible, amen. They let that sodomite out of Russia. That's what she is. She's a sodomite. 
Hey, they let her out of Russia and traded in some war criminal to get her out. And then, you know, so preacher, well, I believe they ought to God her out. I'm not saying whether they got her out or not, but she ought to be made a God. She's a hero now. She's a dopehead sodomite. How does a dopehead sodomite become a hero in America? Well, we rewriting history, amen. We getting rid of real heroes and making these thugs our heroes. We've lost, you can make, shake your head if you are not. It don't matter. They ain't going to change the fact that our world's in a mess. You watch so much television, that preacher can't say something like that, and you think the preacher's wrong. Yeah, right. There's no dope head sodomite a hero. Right. That's right. There's no drug heads made heroes except in America. Right. Where, are we, where have we come? Where have we gotten to? Right. Aaron was showing me something yesterday. I don't know how long ago it was or whatever. I think it was a boxer. A boxer. He was a, where was he, a Mexican? A Mexican boxer. He must have won his, uh, his fight, and he got the, the, the speak. You had to speak at the end of him, let him talk. About like that guy, that fury guy. What is he, a Russian? What is he, a Russian? Englishman, that fury, fury guy. I watched that fight the other day, and I thought, man, when the end of it, I should have cut it off. He knocked that guy out, and they gave him an interview. And the first thing he said, he said, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how he said it. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thought, what boldness this guy's got. And the next 15 words were cuss words. I mean, he just thanked. He didn't thank Allah. He didn't thank Buddha. He didn't thank the man upstairs. He thanked the Lord Jesus Christ out of his mouth, and the next 15 words were cuss words. That's not how it works. But that Mexican boxer, they gave him the microphone. He said, he said, I cannot speak good English. It was broken English. He said, but I'll try to say it as best I can. And he kept going on and on. And the gist of it was, he, says, he said, what's wrong with you Americans? What's wrong with you Americans? He said, you used to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at you. What's wrong with you? Hey, that's what somebody needs to say. What's wrong with us Americans? Hey, somebody on the outside has to see the weakness is going in while we're blinded, amen. Hey, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Hey, man, our country, what a mess it's in. This is where we're living, Ann. Our country is sold out. Was it worth it? It ain't going to be worth it. That's why she's not found in prophecy. Because the end we haven't seen yet. Hey, man, but you ain't going to sell God down the river. A nation that started itself on the liberty of serving God and putting forth this King James Bible and saving souls around the world that turn your back on God and make laws the way we went, it is not going to be worth it. We ain't seen it bad yet. God, hope I hope the rapture takes place before it gets any worse. But we don't know what we're going to have to face. Our country is sold out. Now, as our country is sold out, our convictions as Christians have sold out. We've got no more convictions anymore. Hey, but the Bible says in 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 15, 16, and 17, he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world. It's not of God. It's of the world. Amen. And God's people are living like the world. Amen. Is it worth it? What you got out of it? Busted homes? Wayward children, busted lives, it ain't worth it, amen. We sold out our convictions. We've laid down our standards, amen. Hey, man, hey, hey, let me, let, me, let, me just, let, me, let me just make it personal. Hey, when you and I were lost, when we were lost, you know what's a shame? There's more Christians today, Christians, saved people I'm talking about, not lost people, saved people that had more convictions than they, when they were lost than they had when they're saved. You say, preacher, I got more now than I ever had. Let me ask you then. Let me just put it on this kind of a scale. Hey, man, hey, hey, how many of you would go out and party all night when you didn't have no sleep? How many of you couldn't wait like the brother said this morning? Hey, man, we don't want to bring up the sour grapes of the old world, but we couldn't wait the Friday night. We can go out and party all night and then worry about we got any sleep. You ain't going to raise your hands. I know you did it. I done it. We went without sleep. We went, we went as far as we could. But God forbid you're going to get up for Sunday school. God forbid you're going to lose a little sleep and get up for Sunday morning. i got to have my rest on Sunday. You know what? You have more convictions to serve the devil than you got to serve God. And you need to hear that, amen. You better wake up. You're going to stand before the Lord one day. And is it going to be worth it? 
that when God lays you out in the balance and the scale and said, look how much you serve the devil and look how much you serve me. You're, you are more faithful to the boy than you are to the house of God. You didn't miss a Friday night. Didn't miss a Saturday night. But, well, we don't care about missing church. That's personal, ain't it? And you're serving a simple and adulterous generation. You'd go without sleep to do it. Hey, you'd go without money. Well, I ain't got no money for that. I can't hang out with the church. You went party me to have no money. But you can't hang out with the church if you ain't got no money. Come on, there's something wrong with our standards today. We've lost our convictions. We love the world more than we love God. Who yeah, right. said, well, I, I, I can't go to church, preacher. I ain't got no transportation. You didn't matter you when you were lost. You called all every friend in your in your in your journal because you didn't have a cell phone back then with all the numbers in it. Uh, you pulled out the book and looked them up. You called every one of them that maybe one of them would come get you. But when it comes to church, you ain't gonna ride and I didn't ask one person, that's it. Am I making any sense? Hey, we lost our convictions, is what we're at. Hey, let me ask you, is it worth it? Now you maybe not realize it yet, but you'll realize sooner or later it wasn't worth it. It's not worth it, amen. Amen. Hey, we serve the world. We serve the world harder and stronger than we serve God. Hey, 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 hey. Now listen, don't, don't look at me sideways. Some of you got legit excuses for your sicknesses, and I'm not throwing stones at you. You cannot do more than you can do. I've already made mention of a couple of you this morning, so I'm not throwing any stones. But let me say this. Hey, you went to the bar when you were sick, but you can't come to church. Let me just put it down to this scale. If you can't come to church Sunday morning and Sunday night, it's probably a good idea you probably can't go to work Monday. Yeah, right. But it's amazing how many people get a Sunday sickness, a 24-hour Sunday bug, a virus of church, but automatically they are wonderfully healed Monday morning at time to go to work and make the dollar. You know what the truth of it is? Listen to this, preacher. The truth of the matter is you serve the world more than you're serving God. Hey, hey, if I can't go to church, I can't go nowhere. Yeah. Not like in the COVID age we were living in. People couldn't go to church, but they were found everywhere else. Yeah. Hey, hey, we love the world more than we love God. We just need to be told it every once in a while. Maybe we'll wake up to where we're at. Yeah, our country's gone to pot. You agree with me on that. But what about convictions in our own lives? Hey, hey, we've sold out our convictions, amen. Hey, we'll do more for God, for the world, than we'll do for God. Hey, my friends ain't going to party with me, but it don't matter because I'm going to party anyhow. But you can't go to church if your friends ain't there. Let me move on, amen. Hey, hey, our country's sold out. Our convictions are sold out. Our churches are selling out. Hey, man, brother, talked about good Bible-believing churches this morning. God help, we need more of them. Our churches have sold out. It's just like Jesus said in John chapter 20, John chapter 2, Jesus said, my father's house. He's talking to these people about his father's house. And a little bit later on the book of Matthew, he said, my house, because he is the father. Right. And then a little bit later on, he says, it's your house. Yeah, right. It went from the father's house to Jesus' house to your house. Do you know what the problem is with the local church? It ain't God's no more, it's ours. Yeah. This is my house. And when it's my house, we'll use our books. Yeah, right. I say that Bibles, we'll preach out of our Bibles. We'll sing our songs, amen. We'll worship in our style. We'll have our spirit. Yeah, but where's God? It's your house and God ain't welcome. Our churches are sold out. He don't care what kind of books they use. He don't care what kind of songs they sing. He don't care what kind of spirits in church. You know why? Because we sold it out. Hey, hey, is it worth it? Amen. Is it worth it? Yeah. Well, the gospel's not preaching sinners are going to hell. Is it worth it? Is it worth it that our lives are going to the pot because we've lost our convictions? Is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it? Let's just see, is it worth it? And the Bible said the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Nations are going to hell. It ain't worth it. Yeah. You know what he said in John chapter 2 and verse 17? And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Is it worth it to serve the world? No, it's going to perish. Is it worth it that our churches have gone new age? No, it's not worth it, amen. Hey, hey, our churches are dead. There's no touch of God. There's no power of God. You know what? Because it ain't worth it, amen. Yeah, right. Right. It ain't worth it. 
is it worth it? Go find somebody on death row and ask them, is it worth it? Go into one of these correctional institutes where they admit that I was guilty and it wasn't somebody else's fault and ask them, was it worth it? To pull the, but to pull the trigger and take another one's life. Was it worth it to drive as a drunk driver and hit somebody head on and kill their family? Go ask them, was it worth it? Go ask them, was that drink they had worth it? Go ask somebody out there that's legitimately headed to the, uh, the gas chamber or the electrocution chair. Go ask them, was it worth it? It ain't worth it to serve this old world. Go find somebody dying in the hospital from an overdose and ask them, was it worth it? Was it worth it snorting it up? Was it worth putting a needle in your arm? No, it ain't worth it. It wasn't worth it to them, and it ain't worth the family that's left behind broken hearted. It will not be worth it. Amen. It's not worth it. It's not worth the selling your life out over. Go, go find somebody in the mental ward that's done some grievous sin, and now they're having to live with it and ask them, was it worth it? Go ask them. You know what I believe they'd tell you? It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it at all. I remember my friend over here in uh, uh, East Rockingham that died with cirrhosis of the liver from alcohol, drinking, raising, living his life up on alcohol. I remember going to see him over there in the hospital in Waysboro, talking to him. He used to come witness to him. He had great respect for the man of God. He had testimony of his salvation, but he had ruined his life with alcohol, living a hellish life. And he laid over there on that deathbed, and he said, Preacher, I know I'm dying because of my sin." I know I'm dying because of my alcohol. You know what he's saying? It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth all those nights I got high. It wasn't worth all those partying. It wasn't worth all that pleasure. I regret it now, but it's too late. What yeah, right. shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world? Lose his own soul. Yeah, amen. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Amen. Go find some older Christian. Some older Christian that never served God. You know what the problem is? You ain't got there yet. They some of you that serve just like I'm talking about, half-heartedly serving God, and it ain't come to the reality that it ain't worth it yet. The sooner you wake up, the better off you're going to be. And hey, you think, well, you know, everybody else does. I don't care what everybody else does. You're going to stand before God one day and give an account of your life. Your youngest are watching you. Your family's watching you. And you're saved, and they go into hell watching you. It ain't going to be worth it when you stand at the white throne judgment and they're giving account. We're not going to be there being judged. We're going to be witnesses of the fact of people being cast in the lake of fire. And I guarantee you, that's, it ain't until after then the tears are wiped away, you're going to say, it was not worth my unfaithfulness. It wasn't worth my sinning. It wasn't worth my lifestyle to see them go to hell on my watch. It will not be worth it. But you go find some Christian. That's now they're on the deathbed and they're laying there in the hospital and they lived half heartedly and half heartedly served God, half heartedly was a witness, and go up to them and ask them, was it worth it? They got any gall about them and any sense about them, they'll look you in your God given eye and say, I wish to God I'd have done more. I wish to God I'd have made different decisions. I wish to God I'd have been more faithful. You know what they're saying? It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth all those times I, I laid out and served the world more than I did God. It wasn't worth it, amen. Amen, it was not worth it. Ask the rich man in Luke 12. Let's go ask him. Look with me. Luke chapter number 12. Let's ask a couple in the Bible. Luke chapter number 12. We ain't got them on the deathbed this morning because we can't ask them. Ain't no death row in makes in this, so we can't ask them. Amen. We can ask some of you, but you wouldn't be honest, amen, about your life. You'd say I was being judgmental for calling you out. Hey Amen, that's what you do. You're probably saying that right now from a preaching, but all, you, all it is, you need to get right with God. Hey Amen. Hey, go ask them. you go going to wish to God somebody told you the truth one day. Jesus said, you hate me because I tell you the truth. Well, we don't want nobody to lie to us, do we? I can't stand a liar, can you? And I don't want no preacher lying to me. I don't care if he's got to hit my life and hit my, uh, my way I'm going. Don't lie to me. Don't twist that Bible and make me feel right about my way I'm living. Tell me the truth. Yo, let's go ask him. Let's go ask this rich guy, was it worth it? The Bible said in Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Well, he had it good. And he, brought, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? I mean, my life's going good. It's prospering. Instead of asking God, he asked himself. That's the number one question. Hey, that's the number one problem right there. We don't ask God, we ask ourselves. 
If we don't ask ourselves, we ask somebody just as carnal as we are. What do you think? That's the way it is in church. When you get out of church and the preacher preaches a hard message, you call one of your worldly friends and say, what do you think what the preacher said today? You know what would be, you know be good one day? That one of your friends that live like you do get right with God during one of them services and when you call them and say, you know what, he was right today and I finally got right about my lifestyle. That'll hang the phone up quick. Hey, man, what do you think? Hey, y'all ought to go listen to the sermon my preacher preached this Sunday morning. He's very judgmental. No, you're worldly. And you're full of the devil is what you are. And you're looking for somebody else just as full as the devil as you are to fellowship with. Listen to this preacher. It will not be worth it one day. Yeah, it might seem like you're getting by because sin is against the evil works not executed speedily, but God will execute. Judgment's coming. He said, man, I, what do you think? What do you think, self? He said in verse 18, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? He said, I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool. You know what we are? We're foolish. You say, preacher, a fool's a bad word. That's somebody that's lost. A fool has said in his heart, there's no God. You're exactly right. That's a lost person's term. He's a fool because he don't believe in God. But you know what the truth of the rally is? Christians act foolish by acting like the world. I understand what the term means. He said, thou fool, thou has, had, has, has much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease and eat and be merry. Verse 9, 20, but God said to him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Is it worth it? Is it worth to gain all you can and be rich to this world instead of rich towards God? Is it worth to have more of this world than more of God on you? Is, is it worth to spend more time with the world than it is with God? Amen. Is it worth it? He said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required. Then what's going to be? What's going to happen with what you had left? You know what's going to happen with it? They're going to fight over it. That's all they're going to do over it. They cut each other's throat over it. And what does it matter? What about leaving something spiritual behind? What about laying up treasures in heaven that when it comes down to it, all you got left is something spiritual to leave to your heritage? And let's say, I mean, people fight over that. You know what they'll do? They'll do what most people do when I go in these thrift stores looking for books in there where they got religious stuff over there where people have turned in preachers a whole uh, 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 libraries because nobody wanted anything to do with his spiritual books. I've been in thrift stores and you look through a book and look through a book. I found a, you find a source of a good book and you find another good book and another one and then you look in the beginning of them and all of them come from the same library. You know why? Because they didn't care about nothing spiritual and they throw it to the uh, quickest thrift store to get his stuff out of the house and get away from as much religious stuff as they can. Hey, let me ask that fool. Was it worth it? Was it worth it when he opened up his eyes in hell? No, it wasn't worth it. And it ain't going to be worth it for you or my, me neither. Amen. What about the rich man in Luke 16? Let's ask him. Is it worth it? There's a couple of you can ask. People that's faced eternity. Is it worth it? Amen. Ask the rich man over here in Luke 16. Was it worth it? Luke 16, verse number 19. The Bible says this. And there was a certain rich man which clothed pur was clothed, pur with, clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Boy, he had it made. You know what? We look at the world and we covet what they got. And we think they got it better. The, the, you ain't seen the end yet. It ain't going to be worth it. Listen to me, young people. The devil's going to tempt you to sell your life out to this stinking world. There ain't nothing wrong with making a good living, having a good job, having some money to take care of your family. He that don't take care of his own family is worse than an infidel. You don't take care of your children. There ain't something wrong with that. But you know what the devil will do? He don't want you just to take care of your family. He wants you to sell God out to get it. He wants you to go a little further and let God be left behind. Let's get all you can and love the world and just pile it all up on ourselves and have nothing laid up for heaven. Luke 9 and 12, you know what? It wasn't worth it. His soul was required. And it wasn't worth it for this rich man neither. The Bible said in verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. His two guys, which was laid up at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. One had it 
good and the other one had it rough. The Bible said in verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Lazarus, he's gone. Look at this though. Was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The Bible says, and the rich man died and was buried. Lazarus died and the angels come and serenaded him to heaven. I remember, every time I think about it, I think about old sister Cornelius. Some of y'all remember old sister Cornelius, faithful saint, faithful saint, loved the Lord, loved the church, loved the preacher, loved the, she just loved the things of God. Had died with cirrhosis of the liver, not from alcohol, but from other causes. Kind of like Brother Brooks, hey man, that liver's getting the best of him, but it's not because of drinking, it's just, that's just the way things happen sometimes. But you know what she was? She was a faithful lady. And she used to sing that song. You remember, serenaded by angels? Serenaded by, I, I've been over there when her, when her son was dying, and she's singing that song over there every day, and he over there dying. She was dying, singing that song, serenaded by angels. Hey, that beggar died, and he, he is serenaded by angels. He took up the, he took, well, in this case, Abraham's bosom, I pouring up like it was there. He went down until, you know how it took place later on. But he, nonetheless, he didn't go to hell. He went to a place of relief from this old stinking world. And the Bible said that the rich man died and he was buried. And in hell he opened up his eyes. I heard Brother uh, 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 Jason Coley say one time, I don't know, you can't prove it, prove it not either way really. But the Bible said he was buried. So they put him in the ground. And in hell he opened up his eyes. He said, I kind of wonder sometimes that maybe, maybe, maybe until they buried did they go to hell. He said, preacher, I don't know about all that stuff. I don't know, but you use your mind for a minute, amen. Could you imagine if it did happen like that? The Bible said he was buried, then in hell he opened up his eyes. Can you imagine if maybe it waits, if God will let you stay in that body and, and you're dead, but your soul's still in there. The life's gone, but your soul's in there. And they, and they bring you over to the funeral home, and everybody's crying over you and talking about you, and you wish you could say something back to them because you're still in that body. Now, I can't prove that to be so or not, but just use your imagination. Could you imagine being like that? I'm still here. Uh, hey, can I, and they wish they could, especially ones that were carnal and didn't serve God. I wish I could tell you to serve God more. And they wish that they could say more and you're crying over them and you're putting beer bottles in the casket and cigarettes in the casket and they can care less about smoking anything and drinking anything. They said, take it out. I don't want none of that. But they can't because that's the way they live their life and that's what you think they want in eternity. Ain't nobody want no alcohol in eternity. Ain't nobody want to smoke no dope in eternity. What they want to do is wish they can go back and get right with God for they face him. Could you imagine being rolled in like that and then they take them out to the funeral and they roll them out in the casket and put them out in the hearse and take them down to the graveyard and the whole time they're wishing they could scream out and holler and nobody can hear them and they drop them down in that hole and the preacher says the last words and they throw the dirt on top of them when they throw the dirt up on them and hell they open up their eyes. Yeah, it probably don't happen like that. It probably happens as soon as you die, you go to hell. But you can imagine if it was like that. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? The Bible said in hell he opened up his eyes, being in torments. Seeing Abraham, seeing Lazarus afar off in Abraham's bosom. You know what he's saying? He's, you know, listen, you know what he's saying? It ain't worth it. You know what he's trying to say to us through the pages of Luke 16? It ain't worth it. Because he cried out to Abraham and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Seeing Lazarus, that he might dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because I'm tormented in this flame. You know what he said? It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. I wish I had another chance. I wish I had to listen to the preacher. I wish I had to listen to grandma. I wish I had to God say, it ain't worth it. And he's crying out. And Abraham said, listen, you had your chance. And it's too late. You can't come over here and we can't come over there. Well, your decision's made. It's over. And you know what he goes to? He goes away from himself wanting some mercy to going to those that are left that want mercy. I don't believe one time in his life he cared about his five brothers as far as going to hell. But you know what? When he got to hell, he wanted some relief from himself. And then when he realized he couldn't get no relief from himself, you go back and read it. It's all in there. He said, send Lazarus. If you can't send him over here, how about send him back there? If he can't come get me a drip of water, how about send him back there and tell my brothers? Tell my brothers don't come here. Tell my brothers I was wrong. I made the wrong choices. I made the wrong decisions. And in hell I opened up my eyes. Go tell them don't come. 
You know what he's saying? It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Listen, don't wait to that point to realize it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. We've got testimonies of others in the book that tell us it's not worth it. You can go talk to people in this world today and they'll tell you it's not worth it. You listen to this preacher this morning. It is not worth it. What shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? No, it's not worth it. No, it's not worth it. You know why people go to hell today? Because they won't trust Jesus as their Savior. It ain't going to be worth it. Let me ask you three questions in closing. If you, if you had the whole world, what shall the prophet of man if he gained the whole world, every bit of it, and lose his own soul? If you had the whole world and couldn't have heaven, I mean it all, all its money, all its glamour, all its partying, all its prestige, all its pomp, if you could have it all and couldn't have heaven, would it be worth it? Would it? Would you trade it all for heaven? You can have it all, but you can't have heaven. Would it be worth it? Hey, if you can have it all, all this pomp, all this partying, all this prestige, if you can have it all and you couldn't pray, would it be worth it? You know what? At the moment, you might think, that ain't a bad decision. But listen to this preacher. There'll come times in your life you wish to God you could pray. You'll face things in your life, down life's journey, you'll wish to God I could just talk to him one time. If I could just ask for a little bit of mercy, if I could ask just for a little bit of help, if I can ask for a little bit of comfort, if you could have it all and could not ever pray, would you do it? You'd be a fool if you did. Is it worth it? Is it worth having the whole world if you could never pick up that Bible and look in it? You say, preacher, Bible don't mean much to me. It might not right now, but there'll come a day it'll mean much to you. And you better hope it comes on this side before that side. Is it worth it? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Is it worth it? Best thing ever happened in our lives is the Holy Ghost to correct us and show us it's not worth it. Jesus asked that question. Twice, two questions. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you willing to sell out God over? What do you trade him in for? Listen, you sit back there and get hard-hearted all you want and not come to an altar and you know you need to come, you're going to destroy your life is what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You're going to destroy your life. You said, preacher, yes, just rude. That's rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need somebody to be rude to you. Your life's going the wrong direction at a breakneck speed. Why don't you come to this altar and ask forgiveness? It ain't going to be worth it. No way it's going to be worth it. Child of God, it ain't going to be worth it. Sinner, it ain't going to be worth it. To wake up in hell won't be worth it. What you're selling out God for, it is not worth it. Come on. Don't you wait this too late. Do something now. Make some changes today. I honestly believe. I could be wrong. I wish I was. But I, I, by the Bible and what I've seen, I don't think there's no chance in America ever coming back. I think she's gone. I think some churches are gone. Not all of them. Maybe some, even Christians have crossed the line. They're gone. But not all of them. Don't you be the one to give up. 
Don't you be the one too proud to get help. It ain't going to be worth it. No, sir, it's not going to be worth it. Ma'am, it ain't going to be worth it. It won't be worth it. I'm get you some help today. The Bible says if you, we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Victory in your life could be just a prayer away. God help. That close. Some people get that close and never get it. Judas got that close before he sold him out. I mean, he went up right up to the face of the Lord Jesus Christ and kissed his cheek. Blood running down his face. From the sweat that became great drops of blood in the garden of Gethsemane. He's that close to the door of heaven and went to hell. That close. They some of you that close to getting hell. And you're gonna turn away and lose it. That close. That close. Everybody stand. Let's sing something. I like that old song. That's how you come. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thy practice tonight. Four o'clock pray pra play practice. Five thirty prayer room. Six o'clock service. Amen. I hope you've done business with the Lord. Boy, He sure is worth it. Amen. I have no regret serving God, but I have a lot serving my flesh. It has been worth every mile, every trial, everything I went through to serve the Lord. Brother Ted Mack, how about dismissing?